It's episode 78. Two chaps, many cultures. Many cultures, of course, can be the makeup of people that grow up in many cultures. And we're going to discuss that today. Third culture kids. If you haven't heard the term, if you have heard the term, we're going to talk about it. An introduction to it anyway, right now. Yes, indeedy. How are you, mate? You're muted. <laughs> I'm wondering why you can't hear me. I'm splendid. <laughs> oh, I am splendid. Oh, are we right. third culture kids? Are, are you a TCK? I'm not sure. What 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 makes that? What mm. maketh a third culture person? What maketh? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, okay. Many definitions. Um, it's probably evolved over a um, few years of the discovery of at least the concept of it. Not that it's probably, uh, it's probably always existed, but third culture kids. And the reason we're talking about this is because it often comes up with uh, in our trainings uh, when we're working with clients that either discover that they are third culture kids and have never heard the term or have the realization that they're about to expose their children to such identity. Um, by raising them. So effectively, if we were to take the TCK world definition from the great uh, Ruth Van Raken, who put that site, the general definition is somebody who grows up for a formative and let's call it an impactful part of their life outside of a culture of their parents' uh, passport culture. So um, this would refer to, I guess, you know, we could probably think of maybe military kids that mm -hmm. might grow up in different locations around the world as their uh, as either one or both their parents serve their country um and so that's usually what people would tie it to um but there i, I think as we dig into it there's many many different um uh, iterations of it so uh yeah yeah, that, that, I mean, it had me wonder because when I first heard about that acronym or that term third culture kid or transcultural kids, um, I wasn't a kid anymore when I heard about that. And then I remembered I was I was a foreign exchange student in my teens. So when I was a kid and does that make me a TCK, I thought. And my answer, I answered it for myself and I, I came to the answer. No, I'm I, I don't think I'm a TCK. I'm very much a um a german culture kid who had the opportunity to go abroad for a while it didn't make me necessarily a hybrid now on the other hand i am not i'm not typically german any longer because i've lived outside of germany for so long i think the lines could be a bit blurry around that definition and um i think my, the answer that I came up with over the years was if you feel like you are a TCK, if your identity is a little bit mixed or jumbled up or it's not as clean cut as it is for some other people, then maybe you are a TCK. Who knows? <laughs> right. And, and is it indeed... Is it indeed a mix? Is it, you know, one might argue, and of course I'm, not, I'm no expert in this field, but one, one might argue that they're, both the identities are separate and mm. they are brought together. It's like the, the, uh, the image that we created for this show. It's like a, there's a mixing board you're created with and you might, mix, you know, you might change the mix. Uh, uh, and in some cases you might not use a mix at all. You might use specifically one culture. So, yes. I mean, you and I, you and I are both parents. And you and I both just happen to be parents of third culture kids, would it not uh, argue? What's your what, what's your parenting experience with this? Yeah, and I, I that's why I like the image you chose. So, it, by the way, it's it's not me. It's 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 Brett who make makes those images. <laughs> he he's got that down pretty good. Um, our marketing expert here. <laughs> um, I, I like this specific image because it implies that. TCKs and maybe other people that 
don't necessarily fall into the TCK basket, but we, we have multiple nuances to our identity. And if you're a true TCK, you can push one of those gauges up and turn another one down a little bit, or maybe push two up and one down, depending on how many you got. Mm -hmm. um, one of our one of our TCK friends who actually wrote a book about it uh, and who was on this program, Tayo Roxon, he, he's got more than two gauges or two handles to go up and down. He's got several. And okay. w with, with my children, especially with our oldest daughter who was born in Germany and then raised in the US and schooled in both countries, and who grew up bilingually, um, I recognize that how she can, I would argue sometimes without being conscious of it, pushing one of those gauges up and another one down when she's in Germany, it takes her a couple of days and then she becomes very German, really mm. German. And then she goes to Berlin, which is not your typical German city, it's a very diverse city. And then she puts, all of those gauges up because then she's just firing on all those cultural cylinders inside of her and then when she's when she's in a let's say more monocultural environment here in the united states let's say in a more rural area in the u.s south she totally takes her germanness out of the equation she doesn't need it at all so mm. maybe she does it consciously i would i would think most of the time she does does it without even thinking about it. I will do it consciously. I will remind myself of, oh, okay, I've, I need to amp up my Americanness or get a little bit more German here. I think with our kids, it's it's more on autopilot. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, it's like not even looking at the board, just knowing where the buttons are and tweaking, right. tweaking them to, uh, you know, to suit. And I, you know, our daughter does that too. She's a little younger, you know, it's about to turn 11 tomorrow. And, uh, mm -hmm. and certainly with two languages, and, but also two distinctly per distinct personalities uh, when operating in, in uh, one of the cultures. And again, if we expand a little bit more on the definition, there's also that aspect of saying, they feel they 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 hold a possession of those cultures that they are in, in uh, infused by, but they never really feel that they have a connection to either of them, which can be mm. a little bit disconcerting and sounds a little sad. But you know, it's a uh, it, it it is if you see a, t a third culture, there's great videos out there asking third culture kids, so where are you from? And there's this immediate kind of reflective pause because it's kind of like oh okay i have to go through this again <laughs> you know it's like well i've got to explain this to people you know that i have these multiple places and i don't really feel at home in any of them but i am at home in all of them if that makes mm -hmm. sense yes and well my my kids my kids i think have a different definition for home for me home was often this um the soil upon which I was raised and in the trees around the house and the fence around the property and the people of the town and, and the language that was spoken there or whatever geographically uh, rigid definition of home one might have. I think my kids don't see home as something that is tied to a certain location. They, it, it's more of an emotional concept of where, where do I feel home? Where are the people that I am home with? Or where is the, where does it smell like home? And where does it look like home immediately around me? And it's more of a, I think it's a more sensory concept rather than an intellectual concept. Yeah. And when we work with kids that are third culture kids that have at least an influence of multiple cultures, what do we find? I mean, I've just found this is anecdotal. Again, I'm not a researcher. I don't, uh, don't, I don't pretend to be. But I think anecdotally, I find that it's easy to just kind of ask them a question. So, to the friends that you hang around, are they of your cult, one of those cultures, or are they people that with your with your experience, with your mm. insight? So it's more at, uh, not tying to kind of like a community of fellow Australians or Germans or whatever. It's a community of fellow TCKs. But subconsciously, they just feel at ease because there's this, there's this conversation that goes on. So, yeah. case in point, my, my, my daughter was 
I don't want to call it homeschooled, but when we were still living in, in, a, in a smaller town in Tennessee, there was two years where she didn't go to a physical school building. She had this online school program because we as a family, we had been traveling a lot during that time and it was not really good for us to, to have her enrolled in, in a school. So she was, she was online schooled and the only connection that she made in town was with, with another girl her age who turned out to be a TCK as well. She didn't know that in the beginning. Right. And as, as she got to know her better, it turns out, okay, America or US and Argentina, Spanish at home, German, uh, English at home, the kid goes to, to Argentina once a year. And once that was clear, the, the bond even got deeper, even though they, they disagree on many other things when they talk about it. They're not besties in the sense of, I will tell you my deepest secrets. However, they, they, they found a bond by being TCKs. And I don't think they ever used that term and they ever thought about this. However, uh, as a parent observing it from the outside, this is what, what happened. And this is why I think we get a lot of clients that they, they may have had this experience growing up and they, and they don't, they've never heard the terms because it's mm. not a popular term. And you know, you do, we do our work, we come across it all the time, but so it's something that's really thrown up. I would argue, and of course, you know, we want this to be the beginning of a kind of a series, maybe to bring some uh, experts on because you used um, the term multi, I don't know, well, I, I want to kind of say multicultural children. What if children that come from two, you know, two cultures, two different parents from different cultures, right? They become right. multicultural. There, there's that aspect. So that is that a TCK experience? Is it a, is it a different? It adds a whole different layer. I would argue also, and I'd not, not argue, but it came to me once that if you are a product or you have grown up in an early, at an early age, your parents divorced and you, and the, and the home was split and you shared your time between either of those parents. And, you know, I mean, for whatever reason, those parents, you know, decided to split and they, but you, those, there are two cultures, you know, one parent might go off in, in, into a certain group of friends and the other, uh, and the other parent goes off into another and they build another mm -hmm. culture. So these kids, not only, you know, obviously it's sad to have your parents split, but there's also this aspect that I'm having to adapt. You know, on the weekend I go with dad or mum and I have to, and then I have to change back into this other right. suit <laughs> you know, right. when, I'm, when I'm home with the other parent. And, I, you know, that I'm interested in this. I'm interested in asking these questions of experts because I, I find there are so many different aspects of this. I, I really find it's fascinating. Well, and, and if, we're, if we're going down that rabbit hole in terms of identity definition, a good friend of mine who is African-American, has never lived outside the U.S., has two black parents, um, two black parents who are still together. So she grew up, by our definition, very monoculturally. Mm -hmm. However, I see that, and she's only an example for many other African-Americans that I had the pleasure of, of meeting in my life, that can easily switch between two identities one is the corporate identity going to work and then there is the off the clock um living your african-american self-identity that is not as heavily influenced by the white majority culture in, in the united states so um she is um she's a marie when she goes to work and she is a rashida when she goes to party or when she hangs out with us yeah, yeah. and and the, those are two different personalities and i've seen them in action because i've, I've visited her at work in her corporate environment and then i've visited her or I, I see her quite a bit outside of work and those are two different people well not, well, not two two different characteristics right is that a tck sure. who knows that's right yeah, that's right our friend Yuko here, as you can tell by the name, Yuko <laughs> is a Japanese Dunevilla. first name. Yeah. And Dunevilla is uh, also a Japanese name. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and Yuko suggests that we might consider cross-cultural kids rather than third culture right. kids. Hmm. Right. Yeah. How do you feel because, about that? You know, and again, we've spoken to Yuko in this show. Uh, she's brought a different aspect, but maybe again uh, to come back. Um, certainly she says she also can. So, I mean, I, I think that's, that's good. I mean, we can define it. It may mean again, just be by the uh, sheer, um, fact that you're a third culture kid, you may not like the term third culture. You may see it in right. a different way. And, uh, so, it, so it's interesting. Yeah. So I do the same as our daughter. 
uh, go to Japan or France. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. you know, it's just, uh, it, 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 to me, it's fascinating. And as a parent, you know, I know I always, these are great conversations with clients because when I get into this conversation with a client, because I've got a third culture kid as a daughter, I want to kind of uh, maybe understand how they're going to have or, or, or guide them and how they're going to have conversations with their kids as they grow up in this experience. Because it, you should intentionally, you know, you, you, we all love our children. We want them to, to have the framework to understand their identity, even if they, you know, any, any kid. But more, even, even more so maybe um, when you've got a, a kid who's kind of trying to bridge and struggle through uh, different identities once they go through this process of living outside, speaking different languages, eat, you know, all that kind of stuff. To, to me, what, what it, and I, I would suspect that many parents handle this differently. To me as a father, this means that I personally have given up on many aspects of identity as they are tied to um, the name of the country on the passport or the flags on or the, the colors of the flag or the, the, the dominant language that is spoken here or there. Turns out my daughters have two passports each. So just by... Well, whenever they go on a, in an international flight, they carry both passports with them. They leave the US as US citizens. They enter Europe as citizens of the European Union. And they do this without thinking about it. This has been their normal since they were little kids, right? Yeah. Right? This, they don't, so that is not necessarily what is the defining factor for their identity. Defining factors no. become something else. And my argument, and this is maybe a little bit uh, idealistic, but I, I see myself not as a globalist, I see myself more as a cosmopolitan or our family, that what what defines us as people, what, what makes us the, the human beings in the world that we are, the way that we show up, isn't, isn't delineated by by my passport country. It's not the, the the flag that people wave at the Olympics. Yes, sure, that is a part of who I am, but it's not the only thing that makes me the person that I am or that makes our kids the people that they are. They have other definitions for, for what their markers are, what their uniqueness, what their originality is. Absolutely. Um, that's true, but unfortunately, we not unfortunately, that's a, that was a wrong choice of words, but the structure of kind of intera human interaction is and how often do we get the question about, you know, where are you from? I still get it. I mean, I think it's pretty clear I'm from, from my accent. But sometimes, you know, somebody might go wrong and call me a New Zealander. I'm sorry, but that, Ooh, sometimes it happens. Awful. <laughs> yeah, that would be but, it, but, you know, and, it, and, and there is, so I guess uh, I want to be able to have the conversations with my daughter to say, you know, we, you're going to get this question and it may be hard for you to answer. And you need to kind of come up with a script or some kind of response to it. Um, and, and that may be tied to saying, okay, yes. I mean, with my daughter, she's got three passports. I know exactly what that feels. You know, going on an international trip for us, it's like, you know, you're, it's like dealing cards at the, at the border, you know, which one. And it's fun. And, it, it, you know, we, we laugh about it and it's fun. But, yeah, well, there, there is those kind of identity. There, some cultures really tie their national, national identity. But I, I, when I you, think you're when right. Your daughter, when your daughter gets the question, where are you from, what does she answer? It depends which way the wind's blowing, you know. Or, or maybe the crowd she's in. If it's Polish, she's Polish. If she's right. you know, U.S., she's U.S. If, you know, if she wants to make that feel good, she says she's Australian. Makes the makes um, like following a team in the Olympics interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's got... <laughs> especially if all three countries are competing but uh that, that you know i laugh but i mean it well, is part of the, the, the what function. do you answer when when people ask you where are you from and you don't want to go through the routine do you well, have a yeah. response it is frustrating i mean no no it's it's only frustrating sometimes because i you know my accent gives me up pretty clearly but uh, and I'm, I'm very grateful for it. I always say to people, I'm grateful for the fact that, uh, you know, I kind of stand out uh, all the time. People are interested and I have an accent, particular accent that most Americans kind of find it fascinating because a real live Australian, somebody that's, you know, <laughs> we didn't think you guys existed. There's a whole website on this that Australia is a hoax. It's just all made up. But we, but but we the actually Earth is flat. There is no Australia. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. 
but yeah, sometimes I'm, I am, I'm just really not in the mood. I want to, I just want to, you know, walk into a place and pick up my cup of tea or whatever it is and, and not have that conversation. And I understand that, but I'm very lucky and very privileged that I, I have that type of identity I can, I can lean on just by my looks and my, uh, you know, the, how I present as a person. Some people don't have that ability. So, you know, right. it is, you know, with, with um, some people, their accent is held against them. And so where you're from becomes like, I don't you know, I have to go through this. And, and then I can imagine having those accents kind of feel like, okay, if I tell this person, are they going to judge me from where I'm from? Am I going to be put in a box or, a, uh, you know, where, where it's probably a negative perception, even though they don't, I don't know, it's, it's so complicated. I, you know, and it's, for, and it gets in our kids, for our kids, we, we in, instilled in them that their being multilingual is, is a superpower. So yeah. we, we didn't hide our, our other language in public. So sometimes we, we just speak another language in public and we don't care about, it or we didn't, we don't think necessarily about it. Yeah. And like, checking out at a grocery store, then questions comes, oh, well, well, what language do you guys speak? Or, which is, I think, the, the elevated question from where are you from? They, they simply inquire about, oh, I hear you speak a different language. What is it? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not frustrated by that. I, I, will, I will engage in that conversation. If, if it's this, where are you from? And I'm frustrated with it. I, I learned something as an interculturalist to um, adjust my intro piece i used to tell people the 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 way that i was raised was that i am from this and that town or from this and that country and then go through the steps now i say sometimes stuff like well i'm the first of two sons and both my father and my mother um grew up in the same area of a country overseas so i i, I lead them through through data points or through through markers that have nothing to do with me but everything to do with the group that birthed me or that made me who i am so i, I don't give them this individualistic introduction i give them i am the first of two um this is my mom this is my dad this is my grandmother this is my grandfather and th this is the group of people i went to school with and and that totally throws people off and when when they continue listening, that's when I know this person is actually really interested. And sometimes they they stop listening. They I, I see their eyes wander off, or they get uncomfortable and want to get out of the conversation. That's when I recognize they didn't really care about where I was from. They wanted to pass judgment because there was something that didn't align with their expectations. And that's when I usually got them. That's when. If I have the time and the energy, I engage in that conversation and and make it. You know, I, I don't shy away from con, con, no, no, no. controversy, so I, yeah. I, I, I I could go there. And if not, I'll just leave them in the dust and say, "All right, thanks. Have a nice day and have a nice life." I I doubt I'll ever see you again, anyway. Right, and I think you you used the term, you know, the time and energy. That I mean, sometimes we can step out of that. Um, you know, I can do it by simply just shutting my mouth. You know, I don't have to speak. You know, uh, and 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 I look like everybody else. I don't have to have that. But some, right. you know, but but people who don't have that uh, either the, that that privilege of doing that are constantly bombarded with this question. So I can see it, it does get tiring, and therefore, why not? Again, getting back to that point about hanging out with people that have your similar experience, because you don't have to have that conversation with those people. They get it. It's internal to them. Maybe a completely different experience, different language, different countries, but it might, but it's just an experience. So they don't ask the question. They just know that you are who you are and you're multi-faceted and, and that. So, no, I think it's great. I think, as I said, it's a, it's a, to me, I think it's a great launching pad for a series of um, people we, we, we could bring on. We have a wonderful pool of people that we could uh, think of to bring on to do this. Yuko might be, we're going to bring Yuko back on, talk to her, do it about specifically about this. Um, because also another aspect of her, her family is that she's also married to somebody else who's from another culture and so her children speak multiple yes, there's, languages. There's not, and it's many wonderful. facets in Yuko's family. 
Absolutely. Our great friend Fazan and Nayani, you know, wonderful experience, wonderful insights, teachers and people who really bring some great knowledge and, uh, and, and you know, and brains, unlike me, uh, to this conversation. I just like to listen to it. So it's, uh, you know, that, that's just the fun of it. So that's, way, that's people, I think, where if, we'll leave it. How about that? If you heard <laughs> Brett again um, making uh, derogatory remarks about his own intellect, he's fishing for compliments. So next <laughs> time you do <laughs> that, make sure you comment something about his smarts yeah, yeah, so please. that ma make please, him feel Please like me. Yeah, you know, there was a... You know, <laughs> Please like me. Yeah, that maybe that maybe that's what it is. You've got me. I like that. I like being called out my own garbage. <laughs> no, it's, it's this it's this Australian humility that is a rarity in North America, at least in some parts of North America. So that's why it that's why I like hanging out with you because you're. I make you look smart. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Happy hump day, everybody. This was episode number, what was it, 78, I guess. 78 so. or something like that. We're, we're like closing that. in very closely on 80. It's great fun. We'll, we'll see you again tomorrow. Two chaps, many cultures. I'm out. Bye. <laughs>